Hello and welcome to JN Aquarium Supply. Today we're going to make our very own vegetable based shrimp and fish homemade fish food. Stay tuned. This is probably the fifth time I've made this fish food and my fish and shrimp have loved it. I feed it to my plecos. I have lots of ancestors and different kinds of plecos, hemi ancestors and such and my caradina shrimp and neo caradina shrimp they all seem to love this food so I thought I would share it with you all every time I've made this food it's turned out a little bit better so hopefully this time it turns out even a little bit better compared to my times before from what I learned from my trials beforehand I do not actually know if this food is nutritionally balanced or not judging by the growth of my uh, ancestors and my shrimp I'm going to say they really like it and it seems to do good things for them, but I don't know for sure. So I still feed a manufactured staple food to all my fish as well and use this more of a treat or a supplement. The reasons I say this is I am just a hobbyist. I am not a marine nutritionist. I put the vegetables and nutrients in this food that I have on hand. Uh, that I'm able to collect from my fish room and that I'm a be able to get easily in my area. The process of making the food by harvesting duckweed. I have duckweed in multiple fish tanks in my fish room and I don't mind keeping duckweed in many of my tanks because I do use it as a food source for many fish and I have a turtle that loves it as well. All this duckweed is useful to me. So this is what I ended up with out of this week's collection and that will get added to our food. So here's all the duckweed we collected to go into our food. There's duckweed in there, there's a few little pieces of water lettuce, and there are a few snails. Don't worry, your fish and your shrimp will enjoy eating the snails all ground into this as well. Now on top of the duckweed, which I estimate there's about a cup and a half, we're gonna add two cups of chopped spinach as well. So I've also chopped up two whole zucchinis, which ended up making two cups. That goes in the pot as well. So this is what we've ended up with as a mixture that we're going to have to boil on the stove. Uh, the reason I'm boiling it on the stove is to make it more palatable for the fish and shrimp and also to make it sink. The duckweed will not sink unless it's boiled for a little bit. Now, a lot of the nutrients you're going to say are going to get dissipated in boiling. That is true, but we are still using the same water that we're boiling this in to process the food as well, so we are not losing those nutrients out of the water. So I have the mixture of all the different vegetables and duckweed on the stove in a pot big enough for it all and just enough water that I can boil it for a couple of minutes to just basically blanch everything. So we are pretty much right where we want to be. It was only a couple of minutes and this mixture is going to go into the blender. So now that we have that mixture put into the blender, we're going to put something else in. This is called cuttlefish bone and it is a great, great source of actually potassium and calcium. And your shrimps really do need calcium to help them get through the molting of their shells. So we have a couple more items that we're going to put into this mixture that didn't require to be cooked on the stove. So we're going to put them in now. One of them is spirulina powder. I'm going to put in probably four heaping tablespoons of spirulina powder. And the other thing we're going to put in is omega-1 veggie seaweed. We're going to put in three pieces of this omega-1 veggie seaweed as well. And this should cover most of what these creatures would like to eat. So 
So I just break off a small piece and I will crush that up and put it into the mixture in the blender. So there it is, all sliced up, mashed up, cut up, in she goes. And the seaweed. Should be an extremely gross, vegetable smelly, liquidy mess when you're done. And this looks like it's done. I'm gonna give it one more quick pulse just to make sure everything's mixed up. I wouldn't want anybody to get an overload of cuttlefish bone or anything like that. So the next step we're gonna to have to do, we're gonna get a baking sheet out and some tin foil on the baking sheet and we're actually going to bake it at a very low temperature in the oven for many hours to dehydrate this food and that helps preserve it. When I use this method I make about enough food that will last me between a week and a week and a half of regular use and I don't have to refrigerate it anything I just leave it in the fish room and I use it as I need. So here is our mixture and we're just simply going to pour the mixture onto the baking sheet Let it settle where it settles. Now your cooking time is going to greatly vary depending on how runny you made this mixture. I probably make it runnier than I should half the time, but I find it easier to process it and blend everything together. So it may take just a little bit longer to dehydrate in the oven. So I merely Set the oven to bake and essentially set it as low as it goes. I think ours goes down to 170. Bring it up to about 185. Open the oven up and put her in the oven. Now this process may take several hours. It'll probably be close to oh, 7, 8 o'clock tonight before I figure this will be ready maybe even later as it's about three o'clock now. But just leave it, you'll see it curl up and I'll show you when it's ready. So here's the finished product after approximately 10 hours in the oven at 185 degrees. So after I've picked it all off of the uh, tin foil, this is what we're left with. We're left with just an extremely concentrated power shot of vegetable nutrition for your fish and invertebrates that do like to eat a vegetable based food. So remember it doesn't look like much what you come out with but this is super concentrated and you don't have to feed quite as much of it. Remember also there is absolutely no fillers in this whatsoever nor is there any preservatives in this food. It's just straight up good nutrition. Let's see how the plecos and shrimp like it. This is my 90 gallon ancestrous grow out tank. Let's see how they like it. It's good. It sinks very easily. It's floating down. Oh, that one's floating where it's going to be hard to see. So I just took the liberty of moving that piece back to the front of the tank so we can see. And they're already starting to get on it. And they're already starting to get on the one at the back here. It will quickly, quickly become a feeding frenzy. This is my crystal red Caradina tank. Sinking nicely. 
Gonna land somewhere where we can see what's going on. Again, I took the liberty of just getting the food into the dish. And we'll see how long it takes them to get on it. They're already starting to move towards the food. This is literally two minutes after I've put it in. And they're going absolutely crazy for it. Not a lot of real estate left on that food. Again, less than two minutes and they're all ready. All over the food. And they seem to be doing very good on this. I've been doing this for over a month now with this food. And so far it's working out great. This is about five minutes after I've put the food in. They're still going strong. And the fish that are coming off of the food have nice full bellies. So if you want to try a new food that's homemade with no preservatives and you know exactly what's in it, give it a try. Again, I wouldn't use it as my staple um, on my advice anyways because I don't know the nutritional content of this food. I just know what I'm seeing and I'm seeing that my fish and shrimp that like vegetable based foods are going nuts for it. From us to you, happy fish keeping and until next time please consider subscribing. Thank you and have a great day.